I really, really loathe fan noise. I hate it. It's almost as annoying as a mosquito buzzing around. Got you, you bloodthirsty parasite. So when a fanless mini PC hits my desk, I know my ears are gonna love it. Silent computing kicks ass, and today we're going to check out Melee's Quieter 4C. Right after this message. The EaseUs Data Recovery Wizard app is very simple to use and can help you recover your lost data, whether it's on your internal drive, USB storage, or SD card. It also has support for repairing damaged photos and videos. Check out the free trial in the video description to find out what it can recover on your storage drives. As you might have already figured out, the Quieter 4C is the successor to the 3C and doesn't look all that different from its predecessor. It's got a small, clean and sexy design, which is no doubt part of its popularity. But without a fan, all that pent up heat has to go somewhere. And there's limited extraction action on this box. Just a heatsink on the components which transfers the heat onto the plastic case. The Mini does get warm and then hot pretty quick. You won't get burned from touching it, but at its peak temp, it's pretty uncomfortable to put your hand on it, which isn't a problem at all, unless you're trying to jam a USB drive or micro SD card into it with uncoordinated fingers. Why are you looking at me for? The front of the 4C only has a power button. The right side has a USB 3 5 gigabit port. Next to that is a 10 gigabit port and finally a USB 2. On the back, you'll find two USB-C ports. According to Melee, both support USB Power Delivery 3.0 and the first one also has display out. So you should be able to power and display with just one cable if your monitor supports this type of power delivery. Note that the other USB-C port will be useless in that case since it only supports power delivery. There's also an audio jack, dual HDMI 2.0 for 4K 60Hz, a CMOS reset hole and gigabit ethernet. So three 4K 60 monitors with this one. Part of the accessory package is a monitor mount, USB-C power supply, screws, and quick start guide. Melee's Quieter 4C starts at 180 US dollars for the basic model, going up to 220 for the 16 gigabyte RAM, 512 gigabyte storage. And that's the one I've got for this video. This top model is a mix of 256GB EMMC storage and a Gen 3 NVMe for the other half. The 4C is easy to open. Just four screws and pop open the lid. Inside is the M.2 NVMe slot and the CMOS battery and that's about it. All the other parts are soldered on, including the Intel AC9560 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. As with every mini PC I've reviewed in the last year or two, Windows 11 Pro is included. Ubuntu works fine running off a USB drive on pretty much every N100 I've tested, and the Quieter 4C is no different. Intel's N100 is a very common budget CPU now, and is a nice upgrade from the previous generation. I do wish the N97 had been the most common choice thanks to its better integrated graphics, but here we are. The N100 is good for day-to-day -day computing, 4K60 video playback, emulation up to the PS2, GameCube era, light 1080p video editing, and some very light gaming. One thing you quickly learn with budget fanless mini PCs is to temper your expectations when it comes to performance. The Silent Wonders often get outperformed by their actively cooled cousins because they need a large expensive heatsink to cool them as well as a fan would. And this thing is tiny. So how does the Melee Quieter 4C stack up? especially against the first N100 fanless mini PC I reviewed last year, the Neos May AC it in. Well, in single core, the default power limit brought back a score of almost 800, which is the best result out of the three fanless minis tested so far. And that's a 15% drop over the best performing actively cooled mini PC. But as with many other minis, the Melee can be pushed further in the BIOS by forcing a higher power limit. I set the turbo option to 30 watts for PL1 and 2 to make sure it works. That increases power draw, CPU temperature, and also the score by 14%. Now the 4C matches the other fanless minis that have the power limit increase applied, and is now only 6% behind the best. Not bad at all. Multi-core performance has so far been pretty dismal across the fanless minis with the default power limits. Still, the 4C takes the lead, 
and also with the power increase, which sees a massive 47% jump. And that's a 6% better score compared to the AC8N. Against the best actively cooled result, 16% behind. In video coding, you can see how poorly the fanless minis do with their default configurations. They're miles behind the competition. Upping the power limit again gives a large boost to performance, this time 43%. And the 4C is only 13% behind the best result. Nice. This is the first mini PC I've reviewed running LPDDR4 memory at 4267 MHz, and the graphics score is almost identical to the DDR5 units in both DX11 and DX12 tests. DDR5 chips wouldn't see any gains based on these benchmark results. Melee has decided to install the Windows OS on the EMMC drive, which is slower than a SATA SSD. For the combo models, I think it should be installed on the NVMe drive, which is quite a bit faster. Then the EMMC drive could be used for extra storage. Or better yet, ditch EMMC for good and switch it for soldered on SATA storage. Please? Overall Windows is still pretty responsive, but might as well go for the better option. Alright, let's see the two power modes visualized with games. I've been asked a few times if Roblox runs fine on the N100. so. Today's the day we check out Roblox. MSI Afterburner isn't supported, so I'm using the in-game FPS counter. This performance is fine for kids, but neither is hitting the maximum 60 frames per second. At the default power limit, you're looking at about 10 frames per second lower than with the power limit raised, which runs at about 40 to 50 FPS. Valorant is a CPU intensive game, and even though both power limits are bottlenecked on the CPU side, the difference is huge. At default, it's unplayable, and decently playable with a power increase. League of Legends also has a large bump in frame rate by around 20 FPS, or around 40%. In Grand Theft Auto 5, again, a nice improvement. I've covered emulation with the N100 extensively. You're looking at PS2, GameCube, Wii era at 720p for most titles. This tough to emulate PS2 game doesn't quite get there but the performance between the two is also pretty noticeable. Here are the power options in the BIOS some will find useful. Melee's quieter 4C is on the lower end when it comes to idle power draw, and with maximum power draw, you can see that the extra performance is not free. Power usage jumps up from 21 watts to 30. That's an extra nine watts of heat under load that the 4C needs to get rid of and that's problematic. There's not enough surface area to dissipate the extra heat, and we reach a new high temp of 98C, which isn't great. The default power limit brings back 83C, which is fine, and likely why it was chosen for this mini PC. I would try and find some middle ground between performance and temps. Maybe drop it to 25 watts and see how that goes. The EMMC storage unfortunately has no temperature sensor, but the included NVMe drive does have a drive temp sensor, which peaked at 63C. Not a great result, but still below some actively cooled minis, as there is some heat being dissipated thanks to the thermal pad connecting to the case. And of course, being fanless, the 4C is completely silent, so whatever your ambient noise level is, that's all you'll ever hear. Alright, let's sum up this one. Melee's Quieter 4C is another affordable option for fanless computing. And that's always a big win. It has USB-C power delivery and display, so you can hook it up to a compatible monitor with one cable. It's also very small and pocketable. Performance with a 30 watt mode is the best I've seen on a fanless mini so far, but that comes with a cost of a high CPU temp. And CPU performance out of the box is low, just like the other fanless minis I've tested. I think for the dual storage option, Windows should be installed on the NVMe drive, or switch the EMMC for SATA. So, you'll need to tweak the 4C to get the best balance between CPU temp and performance, or of course you can use it as is 
and enjoy the lower temperatures, but don't expect full Intel N100 performance out of the box. As we've gone through with multiple examples, there's a pretty big difference when it's power limited. Since you're already looking at a fanless N100 mini PC, why not check out my review of the Neos May AC8N, which is a lot bigger, but is a good performer too. Cheers.